Pomelette Everfresh in its new Easy Pour Pack. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Espresso here on SABC3. Now, from, for the next eight weeks, we're going to be tracing the origins of coffee, as we do on Espresso, uh, starting off in ancient Ethiopia. I don't know the whole history, but the man right next to me over here, David Donde, knows all about it, and he joined, he's joined by Jose Bilandi. Welcome to both of you guys today. Thank you. And we're going to be talking about the origins of coffee, yeah. where it comes from, how it's made, all of those kind of, kind of technical things, and making it at the same time as well. Exactly. Yeah, so what are we doing today? Okay, so we're going to start off by making Espresso, and Jose is going to show us how to make the perfect Espresso, and and we're going to enjoy it just now. It was yeah. perfect for the program. But we want to talk about the history of espresso, of coffee. Of coffee, yeah. And you, you mentioned Ethiopia, and we know that coffee came from Ethiopia. Yeah. Jose, you're going to stop, mate? Absolutely. Um, but there's a lot of coffee. mythology in the beginning of coffee. So the real story, or the story you told is the real story, <laughs> is this goat herd called Kelby. And there's a lot of detail for a story that you know has no recorded history for it. So we think there's a little bit of... Uh, shall we say, ad lib going in there. <laughs> so he was this goat herd and he sees his goats eating these cherries and the goats become a little more virile, a little more amorous, and he okay. wants some of that. So he goes about harvesting these coffee beans and initially they're made into a brew. Anyway, the story picks up again when the Sufis in Yemen got hold of this, this coffee and they realized they could meditate for hours and hours and hours by just having this coffee and they could really? stay up later and they could talk and all sorts of conversation. So if we watch what Jose has done, he's okay. just tamped the coffee. He's freshly ground. It's critical that we always freshly ground. This is the resurrection blend he's using, okay. which appropriately is about 20% of this Ethiopian coffee. This is from a region called Hara, the 20%, and that becomes part of this resurrection blend that we're using today. Mm -hmm. So this, this was the beginning of the story of coffee. And interesting aside, look at how that's pouring. If, if you have so a look at thick. that, it's coming out like honey. Now, if it comes out faster than that, it tends to go sour. If it comes out slower than that, it's bitter. So we control that by grinding just right. We grind too fine, it's going to come out too slowly. All right. We grind too coarse, it's going to come out bitter. So we've got this beautiful espresso. And of course, we've got to name the fact that, that Jose is actually the 2008 SA Barista there's, champion. There's no way we can forget that. But the only way we can really demonstrate that is if we put a little bit of milk in here. Absolutely. Yes, I'll, so, get, you, I'll so get you some let's milk. Let's start with that. So the freshly ground is critical. Coffee goes stale over a period of about a month. But yeah. if you grind it, that goes down to minutes. You know that amazing aroma of freshly ground coffee that fills the room when you've just ground? Yes. Okay, well that's been our whole is career, is getting coffee sure. to taste and deliver on those promises of that aroma, uh -huh. of the freshly ground coffee. Now, how long is that aroma in the room for? It's usually, well, I don't really grind coffee in my own house, but I, I'd, I'd, I'd say maybe for about an hour once it's... I would say two, three minutes, that you get that maximum sort of flavor coming out. Wow. And that flavor stops coming off because that coffee's given up a lot of those flavors. Yeah, yeah. So we really want to use coffee within two or three minutes of grinding to get its best out of it. Okay, all right, so freshly another, ground. another critical thing. When he tamped, it was so important that he tamped level. Yeah. And then that the pressure of the machine is consistent. The whole thing is consistency. So the only thing that will change is the humidity of the day. Yeah. And believe it or not, we'll actually adjust the grinder to take care of the humidity of the day. So Jose's just micro-textured a little bit of milk there. He just micro-textured the milk. Yeah, what does it yeah. mean to micro-texture milk? Well, in the milk? old days, we had foam and we had milk. And they were two separate things. Yes. And a cappuccino in those days, we defined as one third. We'll get to this one of these days. <laughs> we're going to be doing this over a period of eight weeks, so we'll talk about the milk more. So what he's doing now is combining the milk and the foam by swirling and also in the technique that he steamed. Um, but we'll demonstrate That's that what on its own one of these days. Yeah. So he's going to, you said you love macchiato, so he's going to be making you a macchiato. A macchiato. Which lit, macchiato, literally stained milk. And it's just a smidgen, smidgen of milk oh, and that on top there's a little bit of latte art. Did that? And that's why he's the champion, you see. <laughs> <laughs> he literally just poured the milk, shook the jug like a little bit and then this came out. Look it, at yeah, this. It's, it's, it's the jug. results that have to speak for themselves. I've, oh my goodness. Oh, I've got to show the camera this. Look at this. It's almost too pretty to drink. Now one of the great little stories, I, I don't know if you've heard of a coffee called maca java, which most people think is a degree of roast, how the coffee's roasted, it's not at all. Remember we spoke about coffee leaving Ethiopia and getting to Yemen. Yes. The port of Mocha was where coffee sort of moved out from. Yeah. And Mocha java is literally the port of Mocha, the port of java, the Javanese Indonesian coffees blended together. So uh -huh. it's actually a blend, not a roast. Unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. So there's lots and lots and lots for us to learn in this journey of coffee. I've got it. Get to yep. tasting this. Let's at some see point, what right? you think. So this is this is usually how, how I wouldn't usually drink coffee because I usually have uh, sugar. Okay. But, uh, so the big thing for us is flavor, not bitterness. It's critical for us that bitterness isn't considered as a flavor 
and it should be smooth and clean and sugar shouldn't be required. If you want sugar, sure, go ahead and add it, but you shouldn't be adding it to mask bitterness. That bitterness just has no place in the mm. coffee in the first place. Wow. Very cool. Well, we'll just leave Very you quietly nice. to just enjoy that let, by, let by just... the sides of the... One of those experiences. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Not as humbling as the experience on Saturday, but yeah. Okay. So, so when it comes to appreciating coffee, what are, what are the things that, that you look out for? What we're looking for is we're looking for aroma. We're looking for mouthfeel. How thick or thin is it? And then what flavors? And then, the, you know, if we talk about a good and a bad coffee, and I love to talk about that, good and bad coffee, that initial sip, they're kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. But the good coffee will appear in the sort of what we call the mid palate. The secondary flavors that come through is it's sweet and enjoyable. Uh -huh. But the real joy, the bliss in a superb, great coffee is in the aftertaste. Mm -hmm. Does it give you a long, lingering, and most importantly, pleasant Ooh. aftertaste? Ooh. We, we reckon you should be tasting. I mean, now you should have caramel and chocolate on your it's mouth. It's there. It's definitely yeah. there. Ooh. Besides coffee, obviously you have a coffee I taste. Could, I could definitely see that he had one of those classic coffee ad moments. Oh, <laughs> <I could laughs> it's totally, it's like, it's totally like, there. Yeah, there we go. Mm. I, I, we, oh, that's we're nice. going to ask him for the rights <laughs> to that image. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll, we'll get some mileage on that. But I just want to know why there's a queue forming at the moment. There is. Still <laughs> like, yeah, 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 we more of this. More of this. I want to see you do that thing Absolutely. again. Absolutely. Yeah. Let, let's, let's, let's have some new milk. Let's have some new milk. Why don't you give us some? I will give you some new we milk. We always steam cold milk. You can never re-steam milk. So if you steam oh. milk, use it for something else. Oh, oh wow. OK. Yeah. Here we go. Sure. So Jose's so going to make another one while, while we watch. Here's one we didn't make earlier. <laughs> oh, really? OK. <laughs> All right, uh, you always go. critical. Every, everything's got to be at the right temperature. The porta filter is nice and hot. Milk's ice cold. Yeah. And if you watch when he steams, there are two mm. stages. So just the right amount of coffee. He doses yeah. exactly the same portion of coffee every time. And if your camera yeah. can get in there, I'm not sure, you'll see there's almost no coffee left in the grinder wow, that's, that's wow. pre-ground. Wow. No, Professionalism. Everything's smooth, normal. He tamps absolutely level with the same pressure like every single mm. time. But you can see it's, it's, it's not just making off. a cup of coffee. It's, yeah. it's actually art. It is. Absolutely. It's the way you do it. Yeah. You know, it, it's like anything. If, if you really yeah. take it to a great enough sense of detail, you'll get there. Well, we're going to keep on exploring this story by ourselves, but we will be getting you, we'll be getting you back uh, tomorrow again, right? Just like that. Absolutely. Cheers, Alaria. We love you. Bye-bye. Stay with Espresso and SABC3.